Okay, family, how are you? It's me, Miss Sam. So, um, look, Lisa Marie Presley's uh, autobiography was released yesterday, I believe. And uh, people are talking about the front cover. But the interesting thing about it is, before I even talk about, I'm going to read this article from People magazine. Um, which you've probably read already, but we'll go through it together. The interesting thing about this is, when I put in Priscilla, I, I searched for updates on Priscilla, and this didn't come up. I had to search for Lisa Marie Presley, and then it came up. So I'm wondering if that means anything. Now, that may coincide with the cover because the cover of the book has just Elvis and Lisa Marie on there and it has Lisa Marie's name and Riley Keogh's name. I'll use it as a thumbnail because people are saying that it's strange. Now, y'all know the photo. It's the photo of Uncle Elvis wearing the, um, blue, the blue suit with his gold, his glasses, hair laid and all the rest of it, right? And he got Lisa Marie on his lap. Well, how about the original of that photo is with Priscilla sitting at the side of him or sitting, she's either sitting on the floor or she's sitting on the side of the, um, of the armchair. So, effectively what they've done to make the cover is they've cut Priscilla out of the cover. Now, I don't know, I can't see her being happy with that whatsoever. Uh, um, and if, like, do you? And if some kind of compromise has been made, because I think she may have pre-approved she may have been given a draft of the book. Excuse me. She may have been given a draft of the book and asked for her blessing or approval or something like that. But it has gone ahead, it has gone to press, to print, it has been released, and there's no Priscilla on the cover. So let me read this People magazine article, right? It says, Riley Keogh helped finish Mother Lisa Marie Presley's posthumous, posthumous memoir. See the cover here. Okay, so this is an exclusive article, and of course it was on um, it was on Instagram yesterday. Yeah, very weird. I noticed that Riley liked the cover on Instagram, but was it on her page or was it on somebody else's page? But I'm not sure Priscilla liked it. Anyway, from here to the great unknown will hit shelves this fall. It's a strange title, isn't it? Strange title for a memoir. You know, it, it sounds a bit like, you know, Carrie? Carrie from um, the actress who was in Star Wars? That would be more suitable, that title would be more suitable for a book by her. Hold on. Wait a second. <laughs> Camera angle weird. Okay, so let me show you. This is the, um, that's the cover. Oh, excuse my nails, family. I've got henna, I've got soap pieces, I've got leftover nail varnish, all kinds of stuff. I have to have a proper pedicure soon. Uh, manicure soon. i got a pedicure, I've got a nice pedicure. It's either or, isn't it? Can't blind me when you're traveling. Uh, Lord. Okay, so I just showed you the photo from here to the great unknown. Uh, what I will say is I don't like the font. I'm not really sure. I don't like the font. But I do like the image on there. I do like the fact that 
There is Elvis. He's got one eye showing. Um, <laughs> and there's Lisa Marie as a baby. I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to say with this cover. Because it looks so obvious that Priscilla has been cut out of it. So is it trying to spark is it trying to spark conversation and say that look, see what I mean? I've been cut out of her life again type of thing. Do you know what I mean? I don't I don't really know what the angle is. But anyway, the title and the cover of the highly anticipated memoir for Lisa Marie Presley and her daughter Riley Keogh is here. People magazine have an exclusive first look at the cover from here to the great unknown the forthcoming memoir um, for from Presley also written with Kyo Riley Kyo so I, I'm guessing just Riley just finished it I don't think Riley was part of the writing process or maybe she was I don't know I, you know, I could do a reading on it the book will be published on October the 15th from Random House. Oh, October the 15th. And here we are in, um, so they want pre, they want to do pre-orders and sales and stuff. They want to get the money in now. I'm wondering if they're anticipating particular numbers or what? Anyway, um, and is that the final cover as well? Is there going to be like a special edition or are they going to change the cover? Presley first asks Kyo to help her finish her memoir in 2022. Okay, per the memoir's description. So 2022 is around the time that Lisa... I'm trying to think of, of what was happening in her life around then in terms of Scientology, in terms of Ben, in terms of her relationship with her mother, in terms of um, legal stuff, in terms of Graceland, what was happening then in terms of her divorce? Because, I mean, uh, you know, her, her divorce from Michael Lockwood and then maybe any thoughts she had about Michael Jackson still in 2022. I don't know. I don't know. No doubt she would have had a lot. I feel like I'm still sleeping. No doubt she would have had a lot to, um, to write about. No doubt. Okay, so... Excuse me. So, family. Um, when Presley died in January 2023 at the age of 54, Kyo was left with the daunting task of how best to complete the book. Hold on, I just want to screenshot this. Because I'm going to use that for the cover. Sort of. Okay, so thankfully, Presley had recorded her story on various tapes. Okay. Um, so she was speaking about things. I would imagine then that Lisa would have been very candid. I wonder, like... You know, I was talking the other day about Queen Victoria's, uh, sorry, yeah, Queen Victoria's youngest daughter, that when Queen Victoria died, she had lots and lots of diaries and her daughter burnt them all. <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering, put it this way. I don't like to say it, but I feel like Riley would have just sifted and taken out stuff if it if it looks kind of shady towards her grandmother you know what i mean i'm wondering how much of lisa's truth is in this book or if it's just a heavily sanitized version of lisa of lisa's 
memories and experiences and stuff like that if it's highly highly sanitized and also if a lot of the truth is not in it because uh, um, Riley don't want to offend her grandma she don't want to offend Scientology perhaps she don't want to offend other people and this she don't want to offend her dad maybe I don't know do you know what I mean? Thankfully, Presley has recorded her story on various tapes. Okay. Kyo listened to stories from her mother's life in her own voice, such as smashing golf carts at her childhood home, Graceland. Presley's long relationship with Kyo's father, musician Danny Kyo, and her marriage to Michael Jackson. I do know that, that Riley has very, very fond memories of Michael. Michael Jackson being like her stepfather and she really who he was her stepfather and she really really loved him I believe both Ben and Riley loved Michael but I think for the but I think most Pre, most Presley Elvis fans or Presley fans will want to know more about Lisa and her dad Lisa's thoughts and feelings about his life and his music and his messages I was gonna say message or messages his um, his his interaction with the uh, spirit um, his generosity which was legendary and what what really lay behind that also what she learned about um, Memphis and Mississippi and her grandparents and her heritage and her ancestors do you know what I mean and then also about Graceland and, and her mother and father when they got together and before before her father met her mother all that kind of good juicy stuff you know Memphis Mafia and all that kind of stuff oh by the way y'all were saying that um, Red and Sonny were beating up here <laughs> some of y'all were saying that the reason why Vernon got rid of Sonny and Red is because they were beating up people. They were beating up different groups of people. And abusing their power. And that it looked bad. Um, that may well be the case, but I think they had their work cut out for them. Do you know what I mean? As people were bringing it to them, you could see that... Um, Red in particular didn't really suffer fools gladly. So, you know, they had a job to do. And um, I don't recall any of the so-called victims of of um, Red and Sunny coming out and saying, oh, they beat, you know, whatever. Maybe if they grabbed people too harshly or they tossed somebody or whatever it was, I don't know. But anyway, I think that's a, a separate subject, but anyhow. Um, in regards to those two, I, I feel like tremendous. I, I feel like the autobiography that, oh, sorry, the the uh, expose, if you like, the book that they wrote when Vernon told them to go. I don't think it would have contained even half of what they experienced <laughs> and the stuff that they knew. Do you know what I mean? I feel like like Red and um, Sunny would have held back just on a respect basis alone. I feel that. You all heard the telephone call between Red and Elvis. And Elvis was like, you know, I'm here for you. I'm still here for you. Nothing ain't really changed. It's just a lot of stuff going on. My dad making decisions and a lot of things going on. But I'm still here. I'm here for you and your wife. Will they say I'm here for you and Pat? He did say that. So it, it didn't seem like it was it. And this was after the book was written. So it doesn't seem as if like there was any kind of sour grapes. You know what I mean? Any bad feelings. I don't feel like Elvis was that type of person. Likewise, I don't even feel that Lisa was like that person, but she definitely would put her foot down if some if people were taking the piss. And her mum, as you all know, was taking almost one million, almost one million a year, you know, Priscilla was taking from um, Elvis, uh, 
Presley Coffers, the Bank of Elvis, almost one million a year. <laughs> Damn. Now she's still receiving a salary from them. I think it's something like a hundred thousand. Oh, and by the way, they may, um, and I don't know how true this is, but there may or may not be the question of some records of of deceased slaves and of deceased African Americans who lived on the land where Graceland was built before the house was built. There may have been some records pertaining to that and for some reason they may have been kept at Graceland like you know kept like a archived or, or put in a safe place at Graceland and apparently Priscilla destroyed a lot of those records I don't again I don't know disclaimer I don't know how true that in in particular is but it, it is something that people are talking about okay that there are some Memphis slash Mississippi slave slave um, and former slave burial records or some records of some kind of folks who lived on the land before the house was built um, held by the previous owners so on and so forth and somehow ended up in Elvis and Vernon them's hands or whatever and it was kept in a safe place by them Priscilla apparently had access to them again just to repeat I don't know how true that is okay but it's definitely you know it's definitely interesting and um, I mean it goes to show really Priscilla is somebody who can look at the monetary value of things which is, is, is a great skill to have. She's She is a great <laughs> collector, archivist. She knows about auctions and that kind of thing because let's face it, she was married to one of the biggest icons of the 20th century, 21st century. But, um, she, you know, to, to what avail? Selling people's, selling items, collector's items and precious things to what avail do you know what I mean it, it kind of cheapens I wouldn't say cheapens the legacy of that person at all what I would say is it cheapens the person who's doing the selling because you look a little bit grubby a little bit greasy it's like there there is there is an intrinsic value in things sometimes when you don't sell it when you hold it so for example we've got this this uh, piece of crystal here so depending on where this was made the type of crystal the, um, the, the, the factory or the artisan or the place the location the design on this any kind of symbolism and any kind of cultural significance etc etc all of that adds to the value of the crystal right well how about you know i got 12 of these and i sell off all 12 of them do you know what i mean it's like selling your mother and father's china <laughs> you know at their wedding china like we west indians used to have a lot of that back in the day wedding china from the 50s and 60s porcelain china glassware crystal you know goblets decanters glasses uh, vases, jugs, plates, silver, all that kind of stuff. It's um, yeah, it's all a, uh, it's something should be kept, you know. But it seems as if there were some things that were uh, uh, allowed to be in the Elvis Museum, but then other things which perhaps have more monetary value on them were sold off or, or grabbed up by Priscilla. <laughs> Found their way into all these random auction houses around the world. You know?
So, I mean, you can put your put your opinions in the in the comment section, family, on all the stuff that you know we've been talking about because it's definitely you know it's definitely food food for thought and um hold on one second one second okay so anyway back to this people magazine article okay Pres um presley also, she's a great businesswoman. She is a great businesswoman. But <laughs> this is her ex husband, and there's not really much to separate her in terms of her actions from any other ex wife who, who has exploited the husband in death. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of people, a lot of people um, sidelined. I don't know how to put it. Anyhow, Presley also spoke of the more difficult moments of her life, losing her father, Elvis Presley, in 1977, moving to Los Angeles with her mother, Priscilla Presley, and her experiences with addiction and grief. Okay. Kyo took on the so Riley took on the task of fulfilling her mother's wishes to share her stories, both joyful and painful, from here to the great unknown. Is the and where did that title come from? Is that title from Lisa? It seems very bland to me, and I, I just again, I know I keep saying this. Oh, I hate to say it like this. I hate to kind of put that energy out there, but the title is bland, man. And I'm not buying it unless I know that there's some real tea inside it because I know Lisa. But then again, I don't know what stage Lisa was at in terms of writing. So I don't know if this is is this Riley's book or is this Lisa's book. <laughs> Um, is the result of a mother and daughter working together as they try to heal each other per the book's description well we know that Danielle lived with um, with her mum Riley lived with her mum after Ben died we know that and that must have been a, a hard and tough and brutal time for, for both of them and the entire family few people had the opportunity to and 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 we as the public we don't have no we don't really have a right to know about the intensity of that time at all something should be kept private something should be kept sacred but we do thirst and desire to know more about Lisa, about Uncle Elvis, about how Lisa um, got on with her mother, how, you know, what her, how did her mother help her? Why her mother put her into Scientology? What was going on at the time? Her relationship with Navarone, why she fell out with Navarone's father, all of that type of stuff. Very, very interesting stuff. But I, I fear that we probably won't know anything about that. I think Lisa's story has died along with her. Apart from when I, myself, or anybody else does these readings. We try and tap into her. We put, you know, we, we sit with the energy. We, we use psychic skills to, to pull the energy towards us and around us so that we can tell you all about it.
we go back in time spiritually we go back into this vortex this time machine and we we really be on some back to the future stuff <laughs> just so that y'all can have an insight into what Lisa's last moments Lisa's last weeks what was on her mind how she felt about things how she feels about things Uncle Elvis, where is he? How's he feeling? Is he smiling? You know, we want the charm to come through. Few people had the opportunity to know who my mum really was, other than being Elvis's daughter, Keo previously said in a statement. Navarro said that your mum wasn't somebody that we should know, that it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been a pleasure to know her. That's what Navarro said. When he said that I want to push him off of this chair, I wanted to reach through the screen on A Aaron's channel. Who I, I really do love me some A.A. Ron. And I want to push Navarone off his chair. Push him right off his chair. Push him. Why? Shut up. Shut up your mouth. Shut up. That's what I want to do. F you mean. The F do you mean? You sitting there with a chunk, a nice little chunk of Graceland. You. Now you can use it. No wonder he was looking so flashy and nice at Priscilla's party. You don't see how Navarone looks spiffing and shiny. Huh? All kinds of Rico Suave. <laughs> huh? You see all this money shining on him? Didn't you see it? Hey? Ain't he been in a spiral or two? Clothes laid, hair laid, skin looking different. So the money is doing very well. The money is doing very well, nicely. Thank you very much. You can take that percentage of Graceland and go to any lending facility anywhere in this world. They're gonna give you money. But yet have the nerves to turn around and cuss out Lisa, huh? Ain't it her daddy's money that you got to make you shine and look good like that? How is it that one is ungrateful to the dead? Huh? Okay, you and Lisa never got on, but you're a big man now. You're not the, the, you're not the 11 year old that she caught smoking weed in Central Park anymore. Huh? Lisa catching smoking weed. He said it on AA Ron that he was in the park. And when he come back from the park and went back to their hotel, they must have one nice hotel, you know, several floors in some nice hotel. You know, what do you call it? At, uh, New, in New York. And Lisa smell him and Lisa smell the weed on him. I said, little boy, hey, come here, what are you doing? And he hated her from then because she exerted her authority over him. And Lisa was a big woman. She had a child the same age as him, innit? Huh? So you can't let go of that. You're a big man. How about some maturity? Yeah, she, uh, she wasn't a nice person to know. Yeah, Lisa wasn't nice. Lisa, oh, no, you wouldn't have liked to know her. How you sit down there with your thick tum, tongue, nav, Navarro? <laughs> and do your sister like that. Come on, man. You don't think that we'd feel away? We who grown up with Lisa, Lisa who was our fan, and some of us go closer to Lisa when she married Michael Jackson. Some of us, but some of us were rocking with her from before. <laughs> it's a run on sentences. Yeah. And we ain't gonna stop talking about Memphis. We ain't gonna stop talking about uh, Uncle Elvis. We ain't gonna stop talking about Lisa. No, we're not. Already told y'all. So how dare you, Navarone? It's very offensive. You need to come out. You need to come. You, well, maybe that's why you're writing your book. Because one of the family members said this morning in a comment. Um, 
They don't know what the hell Navarone would have to write about. I do. I, I agree. I agree with the family member. I do agree with you, darling. I do. Right? We all think the same thing, more or less. Us, us part of the Elvis tribe on my channel. We all think the same way. But, yeah, there's some things that Navarone could talk about. He sure could. Maybe Navarone might fill in the gaps from his point of view, his perspective in regards to what went down. But you see, because the thing is, Navarone don't care how Priscilla feel about his book, but Riley do. Riley is the one who's stepping on eggshells and on her P's and Q's. Oh, Grant, I can't up upset Nona. Riley, Nona has lived her life, darling. She's lived a thousand lives, most of which you don't know about. Okay? That tosh that you talked about. Oh, Elvis was the love of my grandma's life. No, girl. Girl. Of course, you can't come out and say that my grandma was a bit of a girl. She was she she was out there. She was around the houses and up the lane and down the creek. You can't say that. But a lot of us have longer memories than you. And we don't have the loyalty that you have or the fear that you have towards your grandma. And I don't think that I would have uh, been doing this video had it not been for the contrary reports that came out when Lisa Marie, Riley's mother, passed away. And then Priscilla coming and then me doing a reading just based on the inquiry. What happened to Lisa Marie? And it being revealed in the reading that some ish went down before that lady passed away. So you're damn right we're gonna feel pissed off if we go and buy Riley's book and they, 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 it ain't really it ain't really kosher. It ain't really authentic. Lots of stuff left out of it. It looked like some kind of fairy tale. It needs to be relatable. We know Lisa, we know her character, we know the shit that she went through. We do. Put it in the book. Don't write no fairy tale and give it. We want fairy tale. We go and read her, we call it a Grimm's Brothers fairy tale. We can go and read Sleeping Beauty, Jack and the Beanstalk. If we want to read a fairy tale, we can go and read Cinderella. We don't need to read somebody's highly, heavily sanitized, cleansed and purified version of what their mum went through because they don't want to upset their grandma, who who has is very contrary. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and conniving few people have the opportunity to know who my mum really was so yeah going back to Navarone's book Navarone release your book I will buy it I will buy it Navarone if you release a book I'm going to read it on this channel it's alright they don't need to pay me for it it's fine I will read it on this channel Navarone I was lucky to have had that that opportunity, says Riley, and working on preparing her autobiography for, pub, for publication has been a privilege, a belt, a bittersweet one. I'm so excited to share my mum now at her most vulnerable and her most honest. And in doing so, I do hope that readers come to love my mum as much as I did. The Emmy nominated actress added. I won't mention the Vanity, was it the Vanity Fair article or whatever it was? Vanity Fair or Vogue? I won't mention that because that there was an opportunity for Riley to breathe. Breathe a little Lisa Marie out. After all, she's your mum. She made you. 
some of her is inside of you, Riley. If you can't find it, dig for it. Meditate. Do some Falong Duffer, something. Let it come out. Or maybe not. Maybe it'd be too much. Maybe it'd be too much. Because if you did some Falong Duffer, Falong Gong, my God. That is what you call opening a floodgate, darling. Watch the water, watch the water flood. Watch the, watch the levees break. Watch the reservoirs bust open. Kyo, who recently started, is this too long, family? 35 minutes. Kia who recently starred in the Hulu miniseries Under the Bridge also opened up about her experiences writing the memoir while attending the 2023 Emmy Awards. It's extremely emotional and also very therapeutic, she said. It makes me feel very close to her again. And so it's kind of, again, bittersweet and difficult, but it's also really special. And... Um, from here to the great unknown will be published on October the 15th and is now available for pre-order um, wherever books are sold okay the book will also be available in an audio format narrated by Riley okay so that Family. That is the article about the book. From here to the great unknown. Maybe after reading the book, we'll have some idea as to where that title came from and what it means. Where is here for Lisa Marie? Where was here in 2022 when she started writing her autobiography? What did here, H-E-R-E, what did it mean to her? Where was that? Spiritually and physically, what, what does that mean? Emotionally, what does that mean? Where was she? <laughs> Ashe bless my name is Miss Sam this is a long video and um, yeah put your comments in the comment section um, and uh, some readings will be coming up soon okay Ashe bless R.I.P. Lisa Marie Presley Ben of course Uncle Elvis Vernon Gladys um, Red and Sunny yeah, them too. Yeah. Okay, Ashe, bless. <laughs>